your misery arouses me. <laughs> in high school, I used to impress kids by talking like a cattle actioneer. That's how lonely I was. <laughs> Drunk at Goodwill, the title of my autobiography. <laughs> I don't have any fucking ketchup. So I got up and knocked over an old lady as I was going to get the ketchup. All right, welcome back. Episode two. We haven't been canceled yet. <laughs> it's amazing that they didn't take us off the air before last time. Uh, we'd like to welcome you. I'm Fast Finger Slim. I'm Drama. And this, this is, is our the show. Dapper Dad. This is the Dapper Dad. <laughs> We're going to work out the intro. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to take some time. It, it'll be like, uh, I feel like eventually it'll be like Anchorman where we'll have like a send off and like a good morning, San Diego. <laughs> like something <laughs> really just nice. Be it all the just time. good morning, San Diego. Like it just be been. different. So people are like, can they ever fucking get their shit together? But like make it really obscure cities within the U.S. Make it like, hello, Sandwich, Illinois. Like just like really. <laughs> and then the one person in Sandwich, Illinois is like, is like oh, fuck, oh yeah. fuck yeah, the Dapper Dads are going to come to my town. <laughs> Here's. Here's something fun I would put out on the air for people. I would say that if this show reaches outside of like our friend circle, mm-hmm. if it, as long as it's not an unreasonable thing, like I don't need pe- like us to have a Twitter and people are like, come to Brazil, like over and over again. I'll fucking go to Brazil. I'll go to Brazil. I think if it's within a reasonable distance, like if we get fans in like Wisconsin, Iowa, we should go film a show. Yeah. In there. Like people, like I think it'd be in cool. their basement. Like, I mean, I don't want to like invite myself into people's homes, but like if somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of I'd course. I'd gladly come to your home right now. We will the contact Dap- me if you would like to contact the Dapper Dads to have us do a show in your basement. Feel free to let us know in the comment section, and we'd all, we're always happy to respond to fans. Reply. We would like. To, let's take this show on the road. We'll do a Dapper Dads winter tour of 2017. But I got to keep it underground. I don't want to sell out. So 15 people max. In 15 your people max. Like if you're gonna have people show up while we're doing the show, we need like it's and everyone be like a has to be. Party. Everyone has to be blindfolded. I mean, I wouldn't say blindfolded, but I would at least like everyone to be has like, to be deaf. At least a mask raid party like on that episode of it's always sunny where they went like the password is orgy (laughs) like yeah i'd like to i'd like to have some anonymous sex in a basement while we record it i think that's what we're getting to i mean i think if we're gonna get to that level like i think i mean i'm not saying we should aspire to be like the howard stern show but if there was 15 deaf people in masquerade masks having an orgy around us while we did an episode i don't suppose i'd complain i'd like to throw a hot dog in someone's mouth i mean i'm literally not not my not my dick like a literal actual like like 7-eleven big bite yeah, and then, once yeah. again, not a dick, hot. an actual yeah. hot dog. Yeah, yeah, we're the still, actual we're not food clear, product. Yeah, we didn't clear. If this up. isn't clear, Seven, oh, you mean a Seven Eleven big bite? That's if, what I. Call if anyone my from Seven Eleven is listening to us, please, Fuck you. no, sponsor this show. I have just pro- hot dogs. I have probably bought five hundred thousand gallons of Slurpee in my entire lifetime, and I would like to buy five hundred gallons more. And if. Uh, if we can get a representative from 7-Eleven on the show, I will do some stupid things to get free Slurpees and hot dogs. I, I'm down. I'm 100% down. We need, to, we need down. to branch out. This episode is sponsored by 7-Eleven. This episode is indeed sponsored Stop by 7-Eleven. Stop in when you don't know where you are. <laughs> Stop in for a big for a big gulp and a big bite. Get two for three right now with the special deal they have going on. I believe if you go to the Belvedere Oasis, they also have fidget spinners available. <laughs> Ooh, another topical <laughs> reference. The Belvedere Oasis. Yeah, we're, we're two fucks that make Simpsons references all day. Let's go ahead and make some topical references. <laughs> Yeah, let's. I'm sure we're real hip with what the kids are doing these days. I mean, we're we're all kids, aren't we? I'm just a listen fuck- to the kids, bro. <laughs> I'm just a fucking dad with a fire stick, man. I don't need this. Oh shit. yeah, I, we should have said in in the uh, in the introductory episode, we are not dads. We are 100 percent not that, fathers. I like when we talked. I was like, yeah, the first thing we should say is it's we're the not Dapper dads. dads podcast, but we're not dads. I would like to so make if it you made clear. it to episode two. We we're, do not have children that we claim. Not even close. I mean, th- there could be. A couple of little atoms running around out there, yeah. but I would know because, like, first of all, they they you would see them from a mile away. Like, <laughs> yeah, you'd I notice mean, these giant children walking. You'd see around. the news reports. Like, like somebody would be like fifteen pound baby born that flips flapjacks from the skillet into his own mouth, and, and I'd be e- like, and it's either your kid or my grandpa. <laughs> See, that's for the true listeners. We're going to keep these fucking we're gonna obscure keep these, We're going to keep them real obscure, and then people are going to be like, hey, can I get a shirt that says... <laughs> yeah, and we're going to say, no, you fucking can't. No, you can't. You cannot merchandise our slogan. <laughs> yeah, we have a vicious team of lawyers. We have a vicious team of lawyers. Like on that and episode, it's just us. Like that episode of The Simpsons where Burns pushes the button, and he's got like a retainer of 15 lawyers in a room in his office. We've Blue-haired got, lawyer. We've got that down here in, in our friend's basement. My favorite thing with the simpsons is some of the character names and the one is blue haired lawyer right like some of them don't actually have names it's just just brief descriptions yeah and they've come up in enough episodes where they're like we gotta name him uh blue haired lawyer yeah like they think like well uh, we've used every generic human name for characters that there is we uh, just give a brief description exactly so we're gonna get into this one this uh, we're gonna touch on some party stories 
Uh, so that is indeed what this topic is about. So if uh, we've got a we've got a couple, if, a couple if, light ones. If, if drunken hijinks are your forte, you're definitely going to get something about out of this next hour. And I would so. I would assume this is like part one of many many. I think this is going to be. I don't I don't want it to be like back to back, but well, I definitely yeah. think we'll, if, we'll definitely. I think if we had like because I'm still creating them. You're you're currently sober. Currently sober, and I think I'm going to keep it that way. I'm, oh, I'm doing pretty good. We'll figure it. We'll out. figure it out. <laughs> if if you were if you did listen to the last episode, I mentioned that I was celebrating a year of sobriety yesterday quietly. By the way, uh, nobody n- nobody. You didn't n- go out drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I mean is that like people around me who know I don't drink, like I tell them constantly, I'm this long sober, I'm this long sober, and like, like nobody, yeah, you're like, one of those assholes, yeah, right, like I'm one of those fuckers who's like, I'm this sober, and I have a beer in my pocket, and I'm like, you want to keep it that way? <laughs> I always have something in my pocket, always and I go, you want to keep it that way? Pocket. You want to keep it, it that way? What I have in my pocket? I always have the a amazing 7-Eleven big bite. <laughs> you want to keep it that way? I don't want to keep it that way. I'll take a drink for a 7-Eleven <laughs> big bite. I'll but definitely yeah. compromise my mental state for a big bite. I think every time you eat a big bite, which I also didn't know that was even what it's called because I've never eaten a gas station hot dog, here's and a, I never will. Here's a fun fact. Every time uh, my sister... Every I, time you eat a big bite, an angel gets its wings. That is also true. Make that a sound clip for the beginning. <laughs> People don't know what it is. Yet. Um, but if a Big every, bite of what? Tune in. <laughs> every, every time uh, my sister and I go out in, on uh, into Chicago or to the suburbs or something like that, we usually stop at a 7-Eleven before or after, and I, I've gotten to the point where I have to bugger to let me go to the 7-Eleven because a, a day trip doesn't feel right without a big bite. I'm There's just gonna a 7-Eleven four blocks from my house. That is... I, where I buy my cigarettes. And I, know, and I know there is because I know where you live, and every time I'm through... We're going to bleep that out. I am so... We are, every time you live in beep, we're yeah. going to beep. Yeah. See, and now it's four beeps, and people are like, he lives somewhere crazy. And every time I am down in that town and I drive by your house, <laughs> I drive by the 7-Eleven, and one, I get... Like, you're like, all the times I'm driving by your house, <laughs> weekly, mean, nightly. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say I have a routine, but like, you know how like some people got to like count to 33 before they hop in the shower. Like, it's kind of like that. Like, yeah. if I don't drive by your house at least I five have to times jerk a off week. 33 times before I get in the shower. <laughs> got to empty out your body. I mean, if you're truly clean. Shit, shower, shave, 33 jerk offs. <laughs> that just sounds like I'm hanging out with a bunch of shitty dudes. It sounds in the like shower, you're hanging out with a bunch of Which weird. also happens. I mean, are you hanging out at like shady bathhouses? Because that's how you make it sound. I mean, bathhouse, YMCA, whatever's available. I mean, whatever. I'm not very picky. I mean, you got to make it bath work. Bathhouse has a stigma to it. It has a when you hear it, like if, if I was to be told, oh, my friend drama went to the bathhouse, I would definitely think something as opposed to my friend drama is at the YMCA. Yeah, that sounds like I could be working out, but I'm working out with dicks. <laughs> I mean, you said it. I did. <laughs> bathhouse. Another funny story. I go to Madison a lot. And recently I, I like to peruse Yelp.com. Shout out Yelp, the, the sponsor. I Fuck Yelp. The only reason. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> the only All of our sponsors. <laughs> One of us is like, yeah, I like this thing. And the other one's like, fucking kill fuck. it. The only reason Yelp was created was to continue to feed into this need that white people have for loving to snitch because like it's that's true. all yelping it's is true. is snitching and like very rarely do i ever see anybody who's white on yelp not be like this place was horrible i had to wait three or minutes great. to get a napkin yeah. like that's and i have a problem with yelp i constantly look at it and then i'll be like somewhere and i'm like I need to find something to eat and it can have 50 positive reviews but i see that one negative one and i'm, and I'm like, like that could mm. be me i'm not gonna go there and nowhere has perfect that one reviews. review that's like napkins too spicy water was too spicy one star i'm like but what if the napkins are too spicy yeah i don't want to deal with that i don't want to do because i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna be like fuck i knew this because i went so many places that they're where like, i'm like i'm gonna hate this and everybody's like no you're gonna love it and you get there and you're like wow surprise fucking i fucking hate, hate this, this. Yeah. yeah but i was on yelp and i was looking at madison nightlife category uh the only one i really pay attention to <laughs> i mean i'm pretty sure the nightlife category is the only one you've ever been to on most websites for what it's worth <laughs> and uh <laughs> there was like around the capital it said adult entertainment, which I take a strip club. Not a strip club fan, per se. It's pretty awkward. I got a great story we'll get into on an episode in the future. Keep tuning in. We need you. And uh, so they're like, strip club by the Capitol. And I'm like, that's a weird place for a strip club. Yeah. And I feel like I would have come across it. Mm-hmm. It said it was open till like 4. So I'll definitely go because I get drunk. I mean, I'll go anywhere that's open till 4 a.m. Yeah, I'm drunk real. at 2 and I'm like, I don't want this night to end. But and nothing so, good ever happens after 2 a.m. Yeah. And there's a couple bars I'll just walk into and I'm usually so drunk i'm not sure if they're like we're open till three or they're like let him in or he'll burn it down it's something and they're like we only do shots which i have this happen i have so many stories about this shit at the end of the night the bar is like we only do shots 
okay, what the fuck is the point of that? I'm fucked. I'm in a bar at 2.30. I'm already I'm fucked. blackout Like, drunk. nobody walks in And you're like, hey, let's just give them more straight liquor. Yeah, like, let's not beer. give them I get a... you don't want me to be there, but tell me, like, shotgun this beer and I'll fucking do it. Like, I don't I... want to be here either. I just want to keep I drinking. mean, back in the day, I used to be the champion of shotgunning beers. And so, like, yeah. I would absolutely prefer a shotgun beer over a shot yeah. sometimes. Usually the shot. At 2.30, I'm going to puke outside. Absolutely. Or in it. And it doesn't matter what it is. You could have prevented this. If you would just let me shotgun a can of PBR. Uh, That's a fresh one. That's one. All right. If you're listening in. Cars 2. If it gets five burps an episode, we will be giving away a free digital download movie code. That's three. Was it three? Uh, Is it two or three? I want to say it's two. We'll see how it goes. We'll see with two. We'll see how this goes. If you get to the end of the episode and you count five burps, you get a free movie. It Cars may be Cars 2. <laughs> it's, it's always Cars okay, 2. I will absolutely... The only movie I've ever watched to completion is Cars 2. I... <laughs> <laughs> that's really sad so like how do you watch the i star really wars like movie? cars too so how do you watch the star wars movies i've never seen a star oh wars my God. in real life no bullshit i've never watched a star wars movie that is so like seems like they'd be dated I right mean, they gotta be old and corny they hold up i mean yeah, as i don't long, believe it. don't watch the lucasfilm editions where he like i don't want to get in this is not where this okay, podcast yeah, is we're gonna not gonna go. get into this. but i've never seen one and i don't think they would hold up and i'm not a big fan of sci-fi but to my original point, I love the tangents that we get off on, but then I feel like I never get back. No, no. So strip club, 4 a.m., I'm like, I'll go to a strip club at 4 a.m. Naturally. Just to keep drinking. Of course. Naked women, bonus, maybe. It's the creme de la creme. It's the cherry on top of the sundae. So I can't fucking find this shit. So I'm like Googling it by the name because I'm like, I need to get into this. Find out it's some sketchy <laughs> bathhouse whorehouse I that was closed this. down right outside of the Capitol. I love this. And I'm like, good thing I didn't just try to show up there. And they're like, we didn't, we're not naked, but we'll jerk you off for $45. Is that all? I mean, for what it's worth, that's all I've asked out of anywhere at four. That's all I've asked out of anywhere at four in the is morning. Is to be jerked off? Is to be jerked off when I go to a place. Like if it's like 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> you just go to get a burrito somewhere and they're like, I just start jerking you off. And you're like, I'm not mad. I mean, if, I mean, if I'm going to is Uncle Nick's, actually? if I'm going to Uncle Nick's past 2.30. <laughs> <Topical. laughs> yeah, Uncle Nick's, fuck Uncle Nick. Oh, Whoa, no. I, I love I take, Uncle Nick. As soon as I said it, I was like, I take I it back. I don't hate Uncle Nick's, but I would hate all of the flack we would get for dissing Uncle Nick. I don't want to sit here and diss Uncle Nick's. Uncle Nick's is I love Uncle Nick's. You've, you've been there. I'm a Los Portales boy. I'm also as, a Los Portales you know, boy. Over at Uncle Nick's. This as, is too tough. As a man who lives on the east side now, I have to say that I'm closer to an Uncle Nick's than I am a Los Portales, so it mm. does give me a bit more brand loyalty in that sense. I'm, a Euro definitely takes care of you better at one in the morning than a McDouble does. I'll just throw that out Oh, there. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um... But yeah, so it was a whorehouse. <laughs> so it was a whorehouse outside so it was a the whorehouse. <laughs> and If you're yeah. listening and you're from Uncle Nick's, please bring us some free food. We'll talk about you every show. Yeah, positively. 100%. I like your downtown location better. I lived across from it for like 20 years. A lot of good memories there. You're open on uh, the fucking Merry Christmas. I don't every know. I was going to say you're open on Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know that holiday called Merry Christmas? Yeah. The, the, yeah. Oh, I, I'm off on Merry Christmas. Just so you know. <laughs> hope you have a merry merry christmas <laughs> i hope you have a merry 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 christmas <laughs> but yeah so uh the dra- so yeah you're sober for one year do you care for to- one year and uh the, the reason you're sober from my understanding is kind of because of me um i think you like to give yourself a bit too much credit okay. in these types i was of there sales. and i i will say i push people too hard let's put it this way i wouldn't say that you push me too hard if something i physically pushed you a lot he did he physically pushes me quite a bit i think one thing that people should know about drama is that he's the type of person who lives very large and he's the type of person where uh if you yourself intend to have a good evening and go out to have a good time and you would like someone to be your host for such an evening i could definitely recommend drama here more than anybody else i have had several friends stop drinking after going out drinking with me you're one of them here's here's how this not, is, not necessarily because of me i think all of the other ones but were it, because it, of it me. happened around and i have it. other people who like have drank with me for years and eventually mm. were like we gotta fucking grow up <laughs> like we can't be drinking 10 long islands and then climbing light poles mm. which i did no that doesn't sound fair you can do that at whatever age you feel like i, I say agree. so too but people are bitches i i think that um what had initially happened was i have a history of alcoholism in my family uh, which which we all do i mean i think anybody from the midwest can really say that there's a history of alcohol in their family um but it's one of those things where like you tell yourself a lot but then you still catch yourself getting slipped up into it because it's so easy to because as a society i think we make alcohol very accessible to oh yeah everybody and i think there's the fact that there's this weird misunderstanding in culture that 
like you can be like 17 or 18 and bring like 20 bucks to the liquor store and ask someone to get you beer yeah it's it's just that well when did you first have your first to be completely honest with you, I was a really good kid growing up because really? I if, if you watched last episode, I told a yeah, story if you about watched it. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch those wave files <laughs> if, caress if your you fucking tuned, beautiful face. If you tuned in to the last episode, you would know that I said I didn't have very many friends, which led to the quicksand story. <laughs> so because of that, I didn't really have a lot of chances to be rebellious outside the home. I was a piece of shit at home. <laughs> And a piece of shit with the things I liked, but I didn't really rebel until I moved out of um, my mom's house and out on my own. I moved out at a very young age, pretty much as soon as I became a legal adult, because yeah. I was like, I just kind of want to see what's going on in the world and figure out what everything's about. There's a lot of hard lessons to learn, but I think everybody goes through that, you know? This is beautiful. The way you described all that was beautiful. Well, I was like, I'm 18 and I'm fucking out of here, bitch. Well, I, well for my thing, like it, it was an interesting thing to happen within my family because there was just this kind of understanding with all of us where we took care of each other. And I didn't want my family to be like, Oh, he's abandoning us. But yeah. it's like at, at some point, every young person has that burning drive to go out and figure yeah. out who they really are. You in the should. World. I know so many people who are like far too old to still be. And they still at home, live at home and with their still, parents. Yeah. Like very sheltered. Like, yeah, you definitely have to get out there and it's going to suck at times, but, but like, like it's, you, you just got to do it. You just got to bite the bullet and do it. Yeah, you know, you need the fucking experience. I mean, I can definitely say that there's been some times where I've been completely miserable. And yeah. Like there's a lot of like hard lessons that I've had. Yeah. yeah. Like every <laughs> like waking every moment. Thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five minutes of silence. <laughs> Five minutes of silence. Sure is getting rough out here. <sighs> just a lot of heavy breathing. <laughs> Just a lot of heavy uh, panting. Oh, that was uh, that sounded much mm. different. Your misery arouses me. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that gets put yeah, in the beginning of the episode. That's a quote. Cool. Um, so when was your first drink? My first drink was at 19 years old, believe okay. it or not. And um, the first time I ever way got, different lifestyle. Yeah, that that is something interesting. If if you ever are to meet uh, drama and myself and realize, you'll note that while we do bear a lot of similarities, we are very very different as people as well. And I think that's what feels this friendship in a lot of ways is that we can have opposing viewpoints and have a lot of different things that we can see from each other's perspectives um i when i first got wasted i got wasted off of smirnoff ice oh hell yeah the blue and white that's varieties. how you start um and i it's i was playing circle of death with some what do the blue and white varieties taste like i don't know the last time if i remember it. correctly the blue is obviously like blue raspberry yeah because for safe sale like anything that's blue is going to taste like blue raspberry yeah. unless they specify otherwise yeah it tastes um, like fucking blue like yeah. it just tastes like blue, blue. Yeah. like there's like a you it's just like red dye 40 and yellow dye 60 but like it just tastes like blue and then the white one it was either cherry or it had like a citrus flavor to it mm, at one point it, it was just like smirnoff flavor would you say that they were delicious oh of course they're delicious would, should they be our sponsor I, if smirnoff if you're fuck listening Smir- no fuck smirnoff. i don't like smirnoff ice well i haven't had one in a long time they're probably very refreshing i, mean, I drink their the, the thing about vodka. smirnoff ice is they just kind of taste like sprite after a while until yeah, you're like 17 that's how it gets wild. until you're like a case deep and then you're like oh wait these actually have alcohol tastes in like them. regret i can't drive home anymore <laughs> um i'm just puking up blue now this is terrible <laughs> Um, but I was playing Circle of Death with some friends, and I got that drunk was your off first of some, time drinking. My first time drinking Circle of Death. Circle of Death, and uh, well, I got to say, you were ice. a little bit older, but that is a hard entry. It was a very hard entry. I drank initially. I drank in just a sixer of the Smirnoff Ice, um, but then of course I obviously went through that. I've had this thing my entire life, and I don't know if it comes from being sixty feet tall, but I can always. Uh. That is what three, number yeah, three? Okay, we'll say three. We're at three right now. You Someone guys is get so close to getting cars a copy of Cars too today. Woo. Um, but once I got through the Sixer, uh, just to – if you're from Rockford, you'll understand the locale I was in. Oh, hell but yeah. we – from where I was at, we were able to walk over to the Circle K McDonald's, and uh, I was able to purchase three or four more Sixers, of which point we all went through in the night. And so I would say by the end of the night, I drank at least 17 or 18 different Smirnoffs that I was wasted off of. Yeah, that's a – that's quite the gateway. The, the gateway after that, though, was that nobody I was around was really instructing me about how to drink at all. Um, but I realized that yeah. I really <laughs> liked drinking a lot. Like, I really enjoyed it. Me too. I still do. I, I know. You You go harder than most people I know. Um, I double. I'm not drinking today. I actually was like, I'm going to take a weekend off because I can't recall the last time. And I don't get fucking blackout drunk, but I drink every weekend. I don't drink Monday through Friday. Well, it all uh, Friday, I obviously do. <laughs> right. Some some Wednesdays, some Thursdays. I dabble. But I was like, yeah, I should take a weekend off because I haven't. And so far, so good. It is Friday at 9 o'clock. So you never know what's going to happen. We're doing pretty good. Yeah. So far, so good. I mean, there's only three more hours left in the day before it's officially Saturday. So. Yeah. And then I just have to get through Saturday. I think we'll be all right. I can drink right now. God damn. <laughs> um, 
but one of the things I remember doing uh, was going to Valley Produce and buying a big bottle of cotton candy flavored vodka. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> Those like, are never good. Like, a, it was one, of, I don't even remember what, I think it was Pinnacle brand. Oh, yeah. They, where they have all oh, the yeah, fun flavors have, and yeah, stuff they like have that. All the fun Pinnacle <laughs> vodka, if you're listening to us right <laughs> yeah, now, you make a will, fine product. <laughs> yeah, you make a bunch of garbage liquor and you can sponsor <laughs> us. Um, you know how many fucking disgusting fucking Pinnacle disgusting fucking vodkas I've, I've had? Disgusting Pinnacles I've had in my life. Oh, my God. It's the Pinnacle of awfulness. It's the Pinnacle of awfulness. That's why they call <laughs> it Pinnacle. Their, fuck Pinnacle. Now that we're on Pinnacle, if you're listening to us, fuck you right now. dick. Eat a Pinnacle dick. Um, but nobody had taught me the concept of mixers at, at this point because I was like, well, I drank Smirnoff straight. Why wouldn't I drink vodka straight? <laughs> Sound <laughs> logic. Sound logic. And so I specifically remember being at my house on Churchill Street uh, with my first Topical. girlfriend. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> with my, uh, girl, my very first girlfriend at the time. And uh, drinking, watching Transformers 2. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> drinking Transformers 2, drinking cotton See, I was watching vodka. Cars too. <laughs> Two different people. <laughs> Same concept. Uh, well, drinking cotton candy vodka out of a coffee mug on, on the rocks. Holy shit. Just I like straight. how you're like, this is my like first time drinking, but it sounds like you're like a weathered 40-year-old no. man who just goes home and drinks. Well, I The only any people better. I've seen drink alcohol out of coffee cups immediately black out after that and like break the coffee cup. And, and then they <laughs> open a drawer of other coffee cups that they plan to break. And this is all a Tuesday night. Goodwill, Goodwill is the place to go because you can get them for 99 cents a piece yeah. and you don't got to worry about And you're about drunk it. at Goodwill. And you're drunk at Goodwill getting a mug. Drunk at Goodwill. The title of my autobiography. <laughs> Drunk by Goodwill. In s- other scenes missing by drama. <laughs> beep that last part out. <laughs> by drama. I think we don't have to say beep anymore. We'll just beep. <laughs> anyway. So, it was was that the extent of it? You just got shit-faced on Pinnacle out of a coffee cup watching Transformers 2? I mean, that was the beginning of it, really, from there. <laughs> the beginning just, of the end. <laughs> I mean, it, it was technically the beginning of the end because then what started at that point was uh, lots of shots, and I realized that I didn't have to drink coffee mugs full of alcohol. I could just drink small portions you of it a, you and have you a chaser do, with it. You don't do a shot out of a coffee cup full I do of not do, I do My not shots do. are coffee cups full of alcohol, guys. So you're like, you're the weird old dude at the party. Yeah, you're the old Watch guy. Watch what I can do. You're the old guy who's like hitting on the 18-year-old Mexican girls trying to just enjoy their friend's birthday party at the bar for the evening. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're I like, live here. You're like, I'm 26. I'll take a <laughs> coffee mug I, I brought the coffee cup in the bar. But it's like old stained coffee cups, like the ones that have been used by like Yeah, with the lot. crack. And oh, then there's like the grossness of it and stuff that's touched like 1,000 different coffee creamer packets in its lifetime. Like, God. sounds nice. Oh, such good stuff. Such <laughs> oh, good man. dad. That we just reminisce on. Oh, I love having an old cups. coffee mug like that. That sounds really coffee nice. Coffee mug sponsor us. We'll just keep it very like wide. So like we're, at really, least we're just one looking for sponsors. So if you're on here and you want to sponsor the podcast, please let us know. We'll take anything for a sponsor. For I mean, I don't want to say anything because I don't want like. That Nembla Association coming after yeah, I was us say, I and being like, of, like, "We love your podcast." Like, yeah. I, you're not my demographic audience. I want listening to this. For yeah, our demographic worth. is very specific. I do remember um, several very interesting day drinking stories me that are just very short because I definitely think we need to get into some of your stories here. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember specifically before uh, Fatty's shut down that <laughs> old fatty do you, do you did you ever frequent fatties at all i know ne- i think it was closed by the time i turned 21 no or that no? can't be right because you're, you're older than i am and i, I guess was i never went i heard a lot of mixed things uh also shout out to the gigantic grow operation that was in their basement um and that's why they are huge growing operation. i believe what actually happened was a kid broke the window when he was just like fucking around and he saw all the pot yeah, that was, was growing down there and called the cops like about that. it. Something very topical. It was, like <laughs> something very for people who don't know us are going to really get a lot out yeah, of it. Yeah, you story. can buy that building. We'll we'll throw some free advertisement. For if what you'd it's like worth. to buy Fatties on East State Street in Rockford, Illinois. Um I, it's probably like a handshake and a smile. I mean, I'm pretty sure it. you could buy it for like four pounds of hay, several donkeys, and a good handshake. Because the crazy thing was they constantly had free drinks for like hours. And Always. At, when I was younger before, because I had an ex-girlfriend who would go get fucked up and I was like 19 and you have that terrible dynamic mm-hmm. of dating a beautiful older woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish I wouldn't have said beautiful because now I feel like I complimented her and she's an evil person. And if she's listening <laughs> to this, she's going to be like, still get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, but no, when you date an older woman and you can't fucking go out to the bar yeah. and then you're sitting home and I'm pretty chill, but if you just never come home cause you're a goddamn whore, 
It we'll can't cause that all up. Yeah, but and I remember them always being like, "Yeah, it's just for hours they give us free drinks." And I'm like, "There has to be something to give away that liquor." And right. it ended up being a gigantic marijuana growing operation. Like the that entire was like floor huge, of the basement if yeah, I understood like, it correctly. I saw a picture and the basement is gigantic and it was It was like in popular. Pineapple Express where they got into the warehouse at the end. It looked just like that in the basement from my understanding cuz what the point of the story is that um, I was with two friends of mine who, at, at, at the point in my life when I was drinking quite a bit, I was hanging out with some pretty unsavory characters. My roommates were some interesting people. I don't want to say they were bad people, because just because people are different than you doesn't necessarily make them bad. It's beautiful. Um, but I think you can look at people in certain situations and be like, that's not where I want to be at that point. Yeah, you know, you're like, like kind of a garbage person. Like I feel like you can be friends with people while yeah, not always I'm necessarily... Friends with- like awful people. well i mean i think you could like even awful awful people i think you could take an example i mean even just you and i being so uh, <laughs> four that's four, that's four. somebody's Fuck. getting cars too we're All not right, even I like gotta, an hour into this yeah thing. i gotta cut those off because it's getting cars bad. too is expensive i mean it's at least like a buck 99 on i want to see the sales <laughs> spike <laughs> like i don't know what happened but we got all this fucking publicity for the record if burps one more time we will be giving away a copy of cars too if you'd like that the, who, I think the way we should give it away is whoever comments Contacts first. first. Whoever yeah. contact either drama or myself separately gets contacted. You will get. We will either send you a download code or if you just let, we'll get you an iTunes gift card or something. I don't oh, know. We will get you cars too. I we will. We'll, we will get you a copy of cars too within a you reasonable. You can fucking have cars. You too. can have it. You know you've always wanted. There's one person who's like, man, I really like that movie, and I always wish I remembered to buy it, and I haven't, and this is my opportunity. But I'm not gonna fucking burp. We got to stretch this podcast out for we, years. We got to stretch this out. Um, but yeah, fat, the other reason I didn't go to Fatties, and this is one of my big points, um, kind of sidetracking, is they're very like ridiculous with their entry rules. Insanely it's, ridiculous. It's uh, like blatant racism, which I'm clearly not a fan of. It's almost as bad as. Yeah, which oh, I have great. Stories. But yeah, so I won't go places where you can't like wear a hat or yeah. anything because it's fucking ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. And we like, all know I, what I wear hats everywhere I go. Yeah, I yeah I wear hats literally all the time, and we get what you're trying to say, and it's fucked up, and I'm not going to support your establishment. So there's like a plethora of bars around here that this I is America, to. God damn it. Yeah, you let everyone in your fucking bar, you piece of shit. Like I think the worst like thing not about- if he's like shirtless and like well yeah like if he's like shirtless and drunk and screaming like ah I want to cut somebody's guts out like obviously you don't let that person but into this your is- bar. Yeah, this is the perfect stories. I feel like we'll need to bleep the name. They tried. Um, to, they tried to kick me out because I was wearing a trucker hat. Oh, because they claimed it was a flat bill hat. Oh, I've got a good one. Okay, so one time I went with two of my friends, and we had been pre gaming. Me and my close friend, and then it was his friend. We'll call him. I'm not going to remember the names. We won't call him shit. <laughs> we'll just say my friend. So yeah, my two friends. We tried to go. I don't even remember where. I'm not going to give publicity to fucked up bars. We tried to go to two different bars. No. And they're both shitty. And we're just in that area. So we tried to go. I was wearing a shirt with two Mickey Mouse middle fingers. Two gigantic Mickey Mouse middle fingers. I've seen that shirt before. Yeah, it's a good shirt. Beautiful shirt. shirt. Beautiful. Uh, I was not allowed into all three bars because of that shirt. And I started to get like pissed. And I'm like, oh, so you have like kids in the bar? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, it seems weird that we're all 21 and up and we can't deal with fucking Mickey Mouse middle finger shirts. Like, like yeah, like who hasn't been given the finger or given the finger? Yeah. I passed the age America. of 21. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, fuck. Fuck, that's five. <laughs> okay, we got to give away a copy of Cards yeah, 2 now. We got you. First so person. So whoever, co- the first person who contacts either Drama or myself, you can comment on the podcast link. You You're getting can, a fucking hard copy. You, uh, I, I will. I'm, spe- come, I'm going to a garage sale. I'm going to find a fucked up that, copy. Come into my work and I will sell you a copy of Cars too. And whoever gets it, <laughs> but you can't. You'll never know where he works. You'll, just guess. No, you're just gonna have to guess. But uh, no, I'm getting a very used copy because I want one that has like love a, all like over it. Like a goodwill it. copy. I want one that's been jerked off. So if you would like a jerked off on copy of Cars too, please make sure you contact yes, us at the podcast because it's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be People are really probably hard. already typing comments. They're probably already eating this shit up for a copy of Cars. But anyway, so I was declined entry from two bars so by the third one my friends were like just fucking like we'll go buy you a shirt and i'm like very stubborn with like my principles like i'm not gonna fucking take my shirt off but at a certain point i was losing my buzz and i went to drink so we go to the before mentioned bar that i'm not gonna (laughs) say anymore and uh they were like before we went up i'm like i'll just turn the shirt inside out and take our hats off we'll just go in there and then when i get in there i'm gonna turn the shirt back 
so you see these fucking Mickey Mouse middle fingers. So I go in there, I immediately go to the bathroom, turn my shirt back out. The two dudes I'm with are very, like, preppy dudes who got in the bar, no problem. The one was wearing a satin button-up shirt. And I keep telling... Which, first of all, if I, I've never met anybody in a satin button-up shirt that I respected. Let's be real. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't get to come in because I'm wearing the shirt. I never want to get into a fight. And this will, this will paint the picture with this story. I just like to have a good time and dress how I want to dress. These two will, like, start shit and are fucking insane people. And they dress so, like, nice and proper that they get in everywhere and no one questions it. So we get in. I turn my shirt out. We're sitting out back. My friend breaks a glass immediately just to do it. He goes, I'm going to break this glass. And we we're like, don't do that. And then he proceeds to break the glass just to do it. Like then he cuts genius. himself. So those are the people I'm with, but I wasn't allowed in. We proceed to drink quite a bit. And... Six. <laughs> you, you only get one copy. It doesn't matter how much I fucking burp. What was it at ten? I felt like if it was ten, we were going to give him something else. I didn't say that. That'll We'll work that in in the future. Okay. I normally don't burp this much. I know. It's actually in, insane how much it's happening. <laughs> in but uh, so... My friend breaks the bottle. Long story short, we, we all get drunk. The other guy at some point, like, starts a, a fight with the bouncer who's outside trying to, like, hit on a girl. And the bouncer's being very chill. My one friend is starting a fight with a giant man. My other friend's starting a fight with a bouncer. Lovely. I'm trying to defuse both situations. The bouncer is even like, bro, I'm just talking to this girl. Just chill. He yeah. said he bounced, bumped into him or something. I don't yeah, know. What it, happened. it happens. Yeah. So I, like, defuse both situations. I'm like, let's go inside. Outside's too crazy. So we're in there. We're having a good night. It's getting towards the end of the night. We're trying to... My buddy who started shit with the bouncer is trying to get a drink. So he's at the bar. I'm standing next to a girl. This is a weird tidbit for this. Standing next to a girl sitting at the bar. Appeared to be by by herself. And my buddy's trying to get a drink. And he starts talking to the girl on his left. And they're just chatting very casually. He's waiting for his drink. This guy comes up out of nowhere and is like... Why are you talking to my girlfriend? To him. Mm. And I'm like, oh, that's a good stuff. Oh, it's going to be one of so these So, of guys. course, what my friend does is says, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see a name tag on her that said douchebag's girlfriend. Boom. Which is always, yeah. I mean, like, that's an automatic way to get your teeth eaten. Like, <laughs> So, yeah. So, then he's drunk as shit and the guy just starts yelling. And while this is happening and I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on, the girl to my right keeps sliding me over weird milky shots. I don't know what they were, but she's like... possibly? Yeah, it was something like that. So I take it, and I'm like, thank you, random person. Hadn't even talked to her. And then she did like three, just kept sliding them over. And I was like, I don't know what's going on here. Everything's weird. Yeah. So then I realized it's it's three of us, and this guy's just going off with this girlfriend. And then he produces four other dudes from his group. Of course. So I'm like, perfect. Because so, these guys travel in packs. They're like bears. Yeah. So they start yelling and whatever. And at one point, the main dude who was starting the shit with my friend pulls out a necklace from under his shirt. Like, and it's like a necklace or a chain. It's a it's like a chain because it has dog tags on the end. Oh, so he goes. What was he? Mil- so, military? So, I mean, obviously some kind. Yeah, of military. I couldn't remember which one it was. He says we'll go with military. So Either he's that like, or we're he fucking had- military. And my buddy goes, we're all from the army, bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that is not how you I'm approach the situation. Not. So he's going on and on. And then I'm like, like I said, I like to diffuse situations where I'll try and have a good time. So I grab one guy from the party who seems like a gentleman. And a, I'm like, a normal guy. I'm like, my buddy's drunk. Your buddy's drunk. Let's just fucking go separate ways. And this guy's like, for sure. Like, it's stupid. I don't even know what happened. And I'm like, yeah, I feel you. And then one guy from the back of the group, of that guy's group goes, fuck you. And I was like, all right, now I'm not going to be nice anymore. No, Let's not anymore. It's over it. with. Yeah. So the bouncer who my friend had started shit with previously. It's like, you guys got to go. Everybody's got to go. And I'm like, if you kick us out the front, what's going to happen is we're going to brawl out there. Yeah. You're kicking it. You're just taking you're the, just fight moving outside, the fight outside. And we're still yeah. on your property. So if you want to just watch a fight, it's going to happen. And he's like, fine, we'll take you guys out the back. So they kicked Which them is out what I love being told apart. <laughs> yeah. I love being told I'm going to take you out back. <laughs> so we fucking, they get kicked out the front. We're going through the back, through the kitchen. So my buddy has his arms extended and it's just knocking all of the pans off the shit. And this other guy who has no knowledge of what's happened is taking us out of the back. And he's, and my friend the whole time is like, we're in the army and this is how we get treated. <laughs> and so we get kicked out. And the guy's like, I'm sorry. I, I can never do what you guys did. I appreciate your service. I don't know what happened. And I'm like, we're not even in the fucking army. Like, what are you doing? And then we get in the car, drop that kid off. Mm-hmm. We all piss in the street. I go home, eat spaghetti and talk to my dogs and pass out in the bathroom. That is a beautiful story. I, um, 
I actually have two fairly topical stories, um, and I will try to make them quick for the sake of time. Um, yeah, that was a long one. My apologies. No, I like these long stories. The, the, the more detailed, the better. The reason I have two specific stories is um, the person who is actually in these stories will be coming up to visit me this next week. He, um, uh, Him and his wife live down in Texas now, so I don't get to see him very often, but he's been like one of my best friends since high school. Uh, really, really close. We lived together at one point. Like we're just really, re- like a really, really good friend, you know. Um, so obviously we've had some, we've had our share of fun in the past. One of, the, I, I actually got him to start drinking, which is fun. And the first time he ever got drunk, um, was off of sake, so Japanese rice wine, mm-hmm. and uh, airplane bottles of liquor because he had never really got drunk before, and he wanted to know what to do. And so me being an alcoholic at the time, my advice was. Pick a liquor that you really like, and we'll get a big bottle. And then pick a bunch of liquors you want to try, and we'll get small bottles. I like how beer is completely out of this. Like, well, I, I no fucking. Well, most I people could... are like, I started drinking. Like I, my first official drink. Yeah, what was, was your a, first official drink? Was a forty. Yeah, that makes perfect we, sense. We were fifteen. And That's who we are as people. Yeah, You're a forty. I'm a Smirnoff. <laughs> yeah, that literally paints a picture. Yeah. The first beer I ever had was one of those things where I was I was like ten years old, and I was at my dining room table. And I was reading the newspaper. <laughs> That's how old I am. And at 10 years old. What a I don't know why. Loser. So I'm standing there and I have a can of Mountain Dew and I'm drinking it, but I'm reading the paper. My dad always drinks MGD. Oh. So right next oh. to it was a warm old MGD. So I do one of those things where you're not paying attention and you reach and grab it. I take a nice sip of an old warm MGD. I had to go spit it in the sink and wash my mouth out. And I was like, this is what beer tastes like? Mm-hmm. It tastes never will I ever. Your first beer is like, oh, yeah, you're always like, I will never yeah. drink. This and then is I go disgusting. right into 40s at yeah. 15 years old. Well, because he had never, he had never like, really dr- – he had had like, some wine before, but he never really got yeah. drunk before. I get it for an intro because a lot of people don't like beer. Initially. Right. And so he ch- we chugged this entire bottle of sake, like room temperature, by the way, because that's how you're supposed to drink it. Like we didn't get it cold. Mm-hmm. But we threw the mini bottles in the freezer. And so like – and there was, this was various liquors. This was like whiskey – vodka rum yeah, which is yeah, great for your first time which is great for your first a time. clusterfuck of alcohol what we were also prone to do was that the house i was living in at the time was a duplex um and it it needed it was nothing had been updated since the 50s let's put it that way <laughs> so the kitchen was pretty much inaccessible so most of my meals came from either a microwave uncle nick's or um i had one of those pizzazz pizza ovens where it oh, spins yeah. around <laughs> oh, yeah that shit was on, yeah. that thing came on clutch oh, so many times. quesadillas pizzas like anything you yeah can they put say pizzazz but you can really throw anything you can on throw there anything you can evenly pizzazz yeah. we i think P- we pizzazz if out. you're still in business is, please yeah. we love your product please this is for sure the you one have we seen me through behind. the struggle i would love to support your product um the dapper dad sponsored by pizzazz, pizzazz. an um, outdated technology i believe I, I don't care i'll take it oh i fucking wish i had a pizzazz. Uh, i'm pretty sure my dad still has his at home i should ask him if i can buy it from him <laughs> just so we can like cook pizza down a here hard bargain him. yeah <laughs> dad i'll give you uh, i'll give you 50 bucks and a handshake for your pizzazz <laughs> what sounds fair um but no so we had heated up a couple of red barons while we were drinking and the great thing about this p- particular pizzazz was it was so old that uh it would get stuck and you would have to tap it to keep <laughs> yeah, it to go that's every pizzazz. that's every pizzazz quality and product quality product pizzazz we love you please send this <laughs> yeah. one um and so we were sitting there just chug handing the bottle of sake back and forth in the kitchen while we were spinning the pizzas <laughs> And so by the time we got through the sake, we'd eaten about two and a half of the pizza. So we'd each eaten about a whole one. I'm not really much of a puker when I drink anymore. When I first started, I had my moments. Um, He puked everywhere. He puked (laughs) up a bottle of sake, several small bottles of liquor, and about a a whole Red Baron pizza all over the floor. Uh, He then stooped back to bed where he was convinced I was the actress Evangeline Lilly. So Evangeline (laughs) Lilly, if you're listening to this, my friend is in love with you and almost (laughs) mistook me for you at one point. And I want to say that there's a huge difference. There's a very large difference between how I look and how Evangeline Lilly looks. Um, But it was his first time drinking. So we had many more exploits after that. One of them included a, sunrise drinking watching the sun come up while drinking and that's that's, all I do. that's where you've that's been all up all night drinking and you hear the birds outside and the sun starting to come up so you think you know it'd be beautiful if we went out and watched the sunset and i lived out at uh the apartment complex that everyone in rockford lives at at one point in their life <laughs> and i was back in the fields and so we just went out into the, my truck bed and got some chairs and sat there and had our good morning beers and drank like six and watched the sun come up it was beautiful my last good sunrise drinking was i was i don't know where i was i was in a different city and i came home and uh the passenger in my car threw up out of the window all over the car so mm-hmm. 
it wasn't so much sunrise drinking as standing in my driveway spraying the car with a hose watching the sun watching the sunrise just like yep this seems about right for where my life is at (laughs) not even my puke really really makes you reflect on a lot of things because i don't know if you've ever puked out of a car i have or had someone puke out of a car i have but it really splatters it and it dries quick you would be amazed what wind trajectory does to liquids i have puked out of many i have puked out of several windows on the highway and it has not oh, yeah. always been pretty your face gets cold oh your i've face woken gets so up cold. puking out of the window mm-hmm. on a highway it's a it's a it's a terrible these, feeling yeah we're definitely so gonna confusing. have to have many episodes no there's of this gonna because be because i'm just running through all this of these is gonna be like part one like, of 26 the the last long kind of long-winded story i wanted to get into was um the drunkest i ever got with this friend um i was dating a girl at the time who had found a recipe online for something called Moscato lemonade. Say her whole government name right now. <laughs> yeah. Air them out. Well, well, she doesn't have any dicks on her window, so I think she'll be okay. <laughs> and her exhaust probably isn't that loud. If you were listening to last episode, you'll get that reference. <laughs> yeah, I like to think that people just jump in. I don't need the first one. I'll just I mean, go I like to think second. that it's a weekly show that people can listen to, you know. Yeah, but you just jump in, second episode, yeah. win a copy of Cars too. Hey, not Why a bad not? deal. It's a good place to go. Um, pr- Moscato lemonade essentially is vodka flavored lemonade with a bottle of Moscato and uh, lemonade concentrate. So like the frozen stuff you get in a can, mm-hmm. you put that in in a jug with half vodka, half Moscato, and then you mix it together. And it's delicious, but it's also deadly. And at yeah. this point in my life, it's the best alcohol. At this it's point in my life, I was thing. drinking uh, pretty much vodka and whiskey exclusively. That was pretty much what Those I was are having. Two, two good ones. Uh, two very good ones. And I was specifically drinking Fireball brand whiskey. Oh, see, I that's remember. a terrible one. No, Fireball a was where it's at. F- Fireball. <laughs> Fireball. If you're with, if you're listening to us right now, we would just like to say Fireball. I've never hated an alcohol more than you. I'll drink Malort before I drink Fireball. Fireball. I would like to go on the record to say that while I may not remember all the good times I've had with you. They were most certainly good times. Oh, it tastes like hot ass. It does taste like and hot ass, and that's what makes it great. Oh, oh. Oh. So at the time, uh, we had had just like a sleepover at my place. Like everybody just got drunk and crashed. And then the next morning, she had gone to work, but she had left all the stuff to make more <laughs> Moscato lemonade, mistakenly, at my house <laughs> with almost an entire bottle of uh, Fireball. And I was very upset because my friend was going into the Air Force, and we were very, very close at the time. So like I was just kind of drinking to you know get over kill the pain kill the pain yeah as we all do as we all want to do um and so he we'd woken up we were drinking since we woke up and he said man i really need to get something to eat let's go to portillo's and uh portillo's if you're here i would like to apologize in advance for what i did in your restaurant but we're just gonna go ahead and air all this oh if we're gonna apologize to restaurants i got a laundry we got about a whole six episodes six episodes we gotta go through um so what had happened was before we went out i was like you know, I'm not driving, so I quickly and efficiently whipped up another gallon of this Moscato. Is, that's lemonade. my favorite like thing that pops in your head. Like, I'm not driving, so I should be more drunk. Yeah, I'm not so, responsible for anyone. I want to bear in mind this was alcoholic behavior, and this was at one in the afternoon. Like, I don't want anybody to think this was at like eight at night when I'm going out to get. Just because you're drinking at one doesn't mean you're an alcoholic. But here's what I did at one o'clock in the afternoon: I whipped I up shit my pants. I whipped up a gallon. Of Moscato lemonade and then put the fireball out on the counter. So while he was getting ready to go, I did four shots of fireball and then took a nice big swig out of the bottle, put it back in the freezer, took the gallon of Moscato lemonade from the pitcher and just dumped it back into my mouth like an animal and just opened my throat and glut, glut, glut. Three big gulps. What if that was just the rest of the podcast. It was. Tune in for part two. It's sixteen more minutes of gold. <laughs> buy, buy, pay, pay us money for the exclusive episode of just gulps. That's going to be for the season Fast pass. Finger slim gulps. <laughs> Get it as your ringtone for three ninety nine <laughs> plus charges a month. May, yeah. Additional charges may apply. <laughs> Additional charges may apply. Fast Fingers Slim branded only by the corporation. Wow, that was fucking sick. That sounded so official. Fast Fingers Slim and Dapper Dad's brand only may corporation by one for corporation. Any illegal use may be distributed outside of the United States of America. Use of Dapper Dad's name only at least within Rockford, Illinois in the basement. I feel like you've practiced this for years. You know what's funny? I've is, been waiting for my moment. In, in high school, I used to impress kids by talking like a cattle actioneer. That's how lonely I was. <laughs> Get a get a counter around, come around, forty five, forty five, forty five, come around, come around, forty five, forty five, fifty, 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 fifty,
<laughs> and they're just impressed by things that sound funny. Like as a kid, I didn't even have to say shit that makes sense. I yeah. was just like garble, farble, whatnot. I still don't think they. I still don't think auctioneers say things that make. No, sense. No, they don't. Uh, the key is to just talk as quickly yeah, as you it's can. Just nonsense. You, there, you know, you actually have to go to college to be a certified auctioneer. I find it insane that you have to go to school to be told you talk fast, good. I'll fight an auctioneer. I will fight an air. auction. I would if we could have an auctioneer on the show. I would really like it. Yeah, if come we could in. Have we totally student. won't fight you. <laughs> come to our basement and we won't fight you. I know that sounds like something you'll get told before you get fought in a basement <laughs> but we promise we just want I've wanna... been in so many basement fights and I gotta say every we time j- before it happens they tell me they're definitely not gonna fight me we just want to discuss the crap <laughs> shame on me um so after chugging this I'm sure you've done this before where you chug a large amount of liquor and it doesn't hit you right away oh yeah um, so I chug this large amount of liquor, and as we're driving to Portillo's, I'm like, man, my stomach feels full. <laughs> and uh, we get into the Portillo's, and it doesn't hit me until I'm standing in line to order. Um, and then I was like, oh, and my knees kind of <laughs> dropped. And I was like, buddy, I'm going to need your help here. And so I got it. And like, this was like, un- like not good drunk. This wasn't like functional drunk. This was like, my knees aren't like operating drunk. And so I got up to the counter. It's the only drunk I know. <laughs> I forgot the last time my knees operated. <laughs> I got I got to the counter and I ordered uh two big beefs with all the trimmings dipped and a large cheese fry with a large sweet tea. I got this ma- it, I spent twenty six dollars at Portillo's. <laughs> it doesn't take much. Portillo's, it doesn't take much. You're a little expensive. You're, it's worth it though. I'm gonna say for the quality, mm. it's worth it. Seven bucks for a big beef Fuck sandwich. Portillo. <laughs> we can't keep losing Yo, Chicago, sponsors. Chicago will fight me. Chicago. Chicago do you want the whole city me. of Chicago coming after oh you? Oh my god. For, if we're talking about big, if we're talking about Italian beef, I would just like to say both Al's and and Big Beef have good big beef sandwiches. And if I either do, one, when I go to sponsors, Portillo's, I do rack with the Italian beef. I I've been getting the uh, I like a hot dog also ketchup only. Come ketchup. fight me, Chicago. <laughs> That banned from Chicago. Banned from episode Chicago. Episode two. Ep- episode two. Dapper Dad's banned from Chicago. <laughs> that can be the episode. <laughs> Dapper Dad's banned in Chicago. Um, but it hit me, and so I got the food. And when we've, my friend helped me to the table, obviously because I was. Uh, he's the way he equated it to me later was like helping a big shaved gorilla sit down and eat his food. And uh, as I sat down and I unwrapped both of my sandwiches, I said. I don't have any fucking ketchup. So I got up and knocked over an old lady as I was going to get the ketchup. <laughs> and I blamed it on the fact that the restaurant was entirely too packed with people. That's true. That is that's and I was like, signature. And I was like, oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I just like grabbed a handful of napkins and like some ketchup <laughs> packets. And grabbed her. <laughs> so I grabbed her and put her I to pushed the her over and then I assaulted her <laughs> with my bucket in. <laughs> I gave her the old bucket. Gave her the old bucket hands. I'm gonna change my name from Fast Finger Slim to Bucket, bucket hands. hands. Just really demean myself the entire I'm Bucket Hands. <laughs> um I then proceeded to eat the food faster than anything he'd seen in his entire life. He said it was literally like watching a guru, like how they feed like watermelons to hippos where they just like <laughs> pop it in their mouth. Yeah. He said, that's what it was like watching me eat this food because I literally just put it up to my mouth and <laughs> just one bite after the other into my gullet until they were both gone. <laughs> Uh, we then proceeded to drive out to a cornfield and listen to Mogwai while drinking more of the fireball and just looking at the sky and thinking about existentialism. And that's where that story ends is on a very depressing note. I thought it was beautiful. The thing that happens to me all the time is I'll like spend a whole like night out somewhere and get super shit faced. And the next day I don't get hung over. So I'll wake up. And then, like, I'll be driving back into town, and I'll be looking at the clouds and the cars and be like, nothing makes sense. That's when I get existentials, mm-hmm. not when I'm drunk. It's the next day. Like, everything's weird. It's and like, how, a, it's, how, why, it, are, why are cars? Why are cars? <laughs> I believe the real question is, why are cars, too? <laughs> oh, and we bring it back. <laughs> we bring it back. Somebody's getting a free, If you haven't claimed your free copy of Cars <laughs> you're 2, fucking you're up. fucking up. Get your free copy. Give it to your kids. Even though we're not real dads, we understand. Yeah, that. we're, we're trying. I, I get, really, the kids. I get really freaked out because like I go on Facebook and I see that um like people are like, I'm pregnant, I'm getting married. I'm like, wow, all my friends are having kids, and I'm like, wait, I'm like on the second half towards 30. This is normal for yeah, people. Yeah, I know. I feel bad. I'm like, oh my god, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna keep it? <laughs> like like I like I literally have had conversations with people where it's like, okay, well, if we go up into Chicago, I know if we go over on like the northeast side, there's a place that'll do it for really free. They're good and safe. My friends are like, for really uh, free. No, we've been trying for like three months. This yeah. is a good thing. This and I'm is like, a blessing. Oh. I'm like, interesting that people live different lives than me and have a different goal set than I do. 
All right, and then lastly, the thing that we initially wanted to touch on here is is the reason you stopped drinking. Right. That, that are, are we really almost out of time already? Yeah, we're at 50 minutes. So okay, so this I think, one flew I think by. this next story, if we each take a couple of minutes to tell our perspective from yeah. it. Yeah. Really quickly. So this was, th- this was the last summer. This was this about was a year ago. like the last time I've seen you. Yeah. We, we, like, could, we haven't, and that's why I think this podcast is going to be great because we've got a huge gap. And there's now a we're huge gap see each other time. all the time. And we don't hate each other yet. We will in a couple episodes. And then we'll, I mean, I'm getting we'll podcast there. from different rooms i mean i'm getting we'll be like the eagles we'll be like the beatles where we just record everything in separate rooms and then like send each other the tapes and be like and you're gonna just gonna be like fuck i guess i can edit this bullshit (laughs) we'll just piece it together it's clearly very phoned in it's like it's gonna be like that simpsons episode where it's like i grabbed her sweet can like it's all just gonna be pieced like my eventually it's just gonna be you making the podcast and cutting my old voice cuts from old (laughs) episodes make you sound terrible and then being like man adam i can't believe you said you support nambla that's an awful thing to do like um we're we're a family show yeah that's great let's advertise this as like a family podcast i think it is i don't see uh, why i, I think be. it is um so, but yeah, any, so what happened a year ago um dr- like drum and i've been friends for a number of years and we we do have our periods where we fall off from time to time but that's i think that's a great thing about certain friendships is you can fall off sometimes and come back and pick it right back up where mm-hmm. it left off and i think we have one of those which is yeah. a really beautiful thing to have with another person it's so true. you know i don't think i've ever said that i appreciate our friendship oh, oh, this thank is you. beautiful i'm glad this, this is really came nice. I'm glad i have um, to censor my name <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a heartfelt for a moment. <laughs> I got got too caught. Drama. I so it's gonna sound like. So it's gonna sound like. I really appreciate our friendship, fucker, or some other. Because we wouldn't censor okay, that. Okay, cut so some this. Really... And I will say, I appreciate our friendship drama, and it's just Perfect. very nice that we have. I'm not have editing that. anything except <laughs> no, my name. Give this whole thing. So yeah, um, a year ago. So what? Uh, how many times had we like? We only went out drinking one time before that, right? Yes, this was, yeah. this was actually just two separate occasions because the first occasion we went down to the city market. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the record, when we went down to the city market, I won't say what I had done before I was at the city market, but I will say I was back on my bullshit, yeah. which is a lie because that never imp- been off it. it implies that my bullshit and I were separated once. I mean, we've never really left each other. It's always been there for me, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I, I was actually on some new bullshit this night. This was the first <laughs> night I was ever on this particular bullshit. And um, I... Inf- I, and I I informed drama of this when we got together and he was like, God damn it. This was not what I had intended. I will leave your ass downtown. Yeah. Regardless. Um, by the time we'd gotten downtown, my bullshit was starting to rear its head again. <laughs> and, uh, by the time we'd gotten our beers and gone down to the riverside, I was, I was definitely feeling it. Yes. Um, because I, first of all, I drank both of those beers in about seven minutes, I would say. And they were, yes. they were, and there was there. It's a very populated area. Very, po- let's, let's just, it was like wall to wall people. Let's yeah, just put it that way. It was busy. very busy. If, you, if you're topical like us, you'll know what we're talking about at, uh, at this place. They have different vendors with food. One of them sells crepes. So crepes. we're standing by the river. An odd thing to sell in the summer. Prob- probably 10, 15 feet away. I just want to defend my actions. And say the crepes <laughs> are a, weird summer. There food. is a grown man sitting on the ground. I think with his family. Enjoying he a crepe, was absolutely with his family. Enjoying a crepe. And <laughs> Slim goes, look at that guy eating crepes. For the record, I thought right I was at much him. quieter than what I was. No, you were much louder than you realized. <laughs> I thought I was just at convert. Like, I honestly didn't think I was talking much louder than I am right now to you. It but was very loud. It, I'm sure it was. And I'm sure that guy felt self-conscious about eating crepes outside <laughs> yeah, in the summer. Which you should. That. Which you should. If guy, if you're listening you. to this, you shouldn't be eating crepes Someone's outside. Someone's eating crepes outside right now. Like, fuck. I can't I ever. This is such it's a the place. same guy. And he's like, it keeps happening. I haven't had crepes for a year since that guy <laughs> yelled at me at yeah, the city market. He woke up today and he was like, I think I'm finally over. He tells his wife, Karen, I think I can finally Karen, eat Karen, do you remember again. when that 60 foot man yelled at me at the city market for eating she crepes? He up some, some light, fluffy crepes. <laughs> with, with berries and whipped cream and everything. Delicious. <laughs> he's outside eating it right now. And he's like, man, these dapper dads are pretty fucking funny until we get to oh, the I've park been to that city market matter of fact and then we say it and he just bursts out he just drops tears. the crepes yeah. in slow motion as he's listening to us um but what was interesting is as the night had gone on i really wasn't because of the bullshit i was on i wasn't really feeling any of the drinks yeah. that i was drinking mm-hmm. and uh it was it was summer 16 so it was america season yeah all summer and 16. um i believe at one point we made it down to now, correct me if I'm wrong. Was this the night we made it over to Kryptonite and we had the rum is this buckets? The, is this the night that you were the most drunk? 
It's the, it's no, I that was the one. second night. Because okay, the yes. first night I was on my bullshit. We, first night we went we were to... With, no, because this because the, when the second night was the one where I was as yeah, drunk. Yeah. When we got the rum buckets. Because I yeah. remember it was the rum bucket that the did The first me night in. we just like ran around. Yeah, because I, I remember we were... At, uh, we didn't go to Kryptonite. We'd wanted no. to, but we'd gone to that one bar that was kind yeah, of up Mandalay. by... Man, we went to Mandalay. Yeah. We went to... After the city market. And then after Mandalay, we walked over to the Rue. Well, we went to Prairie Street first, I believe. That's right. We did go to Prairie Street because that's when it was like... Like, like my bullshit was at like maximum yeah, peak. Yeah, and you point. were making areas clear out because you were so loud. What and had ridiculous. actually happened? Okay, here's what happened. I was on my bullshit, and we could we actually just like beep it so I can actually say what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'll, I'll bleep it. From okay, here thanks on for bleeping. Out. Totally not gonna bleep. If you don't, like, I'm gonna listen to the podcast before you put it out. Asshole. I'll make two versions. <laughs> I got time on my hands. He's got lots of time. Um, but I I had taken and I was at peak when. I got to the Prairie Street brew house and I went and looked at myself in the mirror after taking a piss and I was like, wow, I'm sweaty. Um, You're very wet. Very wet. But wetter possibly than I am right now. Yeah, which um, is hard to come it's by. It's very hard to have. In this economy? In this economy? It's a lot of wetness. On my computer? You'd be surprised. <laughs> um, Folder titled wetness. <laughs> no one will ever look there. <laughs> um, and at the Prairie Street brew house, if you ever go there, if you go down into the basement, it's it's sort of an unfinished basement, as in like it's like a cavern type. Mm-hmm. And so this very cavern, very cavern. And so the ceiling, it's like unfinished. It just it has very, very beautiful hip. crown molding, very hip. Mm-hmm. And the song Everlong by the Foo Fighters was playing, and they had these psychedelic multicolored lights on the ceiling. And I remember hearing Everlong, seeing these lights, and being around all these people, and I felt really truly alive and connected with the human race at one point <laughs> in my life. It's which sad is funny because you instantly disconnected from all of the people around us. Which is so funny because then what happened was we had gotten drinks at the counter and gone into the arcade and mm-hmm. being loud as shit in the arcade, we cleared out the entire arcade just being loud and drunk. Um, at that point, some friends of mine from work came in and she was celebrating her 21st birthday, remember? Yes, yep. And we I went up to the counter and I did a shot of mm-hmm. uh, tequila. I did Jameson. I remember that because you don't like tequila. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when the night really started going downhill was because I was... Make sure you bleep it out when and okay <laughs> i so i was i was drunk i was just in a very crazy state of mind and if i remember correctly the way the evening ended was we went to the rue after that mm-hmm. um just crazy per I, usual I, per usual i drank a bunch of long islands with bug uh so that's where i really fucked up and we went to los portales afterward and I, I again got an obscene amount of food. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we went back to the car, I stole someone's little American flag out of their yard because we yep. were so close to the Fourth of July. Yep. And this was also when the Jefferson Street Bridge was under construction. Yeah. And so I was kicking over the traffic cone, screaming "All America Summer 2016" while waving yeah. this little flag around. And then we were in the car. We were listening to Designer the whole way back. Of course. And then we planted the flag in my yard and we saluted it at like 2.30 in the morning. I went inside and got into the bath and just sat there and just washed that entire evening off of myself. I walked you in because I wanted to smoke a cigarette in your hallway. <laughs> I remember that. I was just like, I just want to smoke a cigarette in the hallway real quick because it'll be funny it'll to be me. It'll be hilarious. But then, uh, so yeah, that was the, the first night the of first us night. striking. And th- it was a pretty hard night. Like, I'm not going to say it. We both went pretty hard that yeah, night. Yeah, that was but, typical for me. Because the second time, it went downhill quickly. Because um, I remember I'd come out. We met down at the city market again. And... I picked you up. You picked me up. We went downtown to the city market. We met up with our friend. Yep. And we were... What bar were we at? It's the one that's on the corner of... Yeah, it was Kryptonite. Not Kryptonite. We we were at Kryptonite, but then we also went to <coughs> another bar where we were playing darts, remember? CJ's. We went to CJ's. So we CJ's, went, I love you. We went to Kryptonite. We got rum buckets. I started playing Pokemon Go for the first time. We yeah, that's how it dated. started playing. Yeah, this this Pokemon Go had just come out, and I was against it because I was like, I don't want to do the yeah, shit and everybody's I had just doing. Started doing it, yeah. And you got me into it. Mm-hmm. So you, me, and our friend, we drove over to CJ's, where my ex girlfriend showed up with her with two of her friends. Oh yeah, and yep. that's when the evening started going downhill. Yeah, because all right, I'll jump in here. Yeah, you start um, to interject with your viewpoint. So yeah, we had probably two drinks at the city market, and then we went to kryptonite and had a rum bucket and we went to cj's i had um like a mixed drink or a beer you had the same thing Mm -hmm. and then we're like trying to leave and you're like i turn around and you have a long island yeah 
and I was like, what the fuck? We're trying to leave. And you were like, hold on. Let me zoom in. And you like chugged it. So I'm like, all right, great. We walked to Rue. Uh, you can't get, you any, don't more get any more cars. More to- <laughs> <laughs> if um, you get to 10 by the end of the story, we got uh, we got to buy a Blu-ray. <laughs> but yeah, so we go to Rue. You go in there and you get a Long Island. And then at one point, someone hands you a strange drink. Here's what happened that night. Do you- Okay, yeah, go ahead. The the girl I'm dating now showed up that night because we had just started working together. And she had showed up with a bunch of her friends. And that was a tequila sunrise, not a Long Island. But someone handed you a drink, and I don't know if you were drunk, but I was like, who is that? Because it was like a dude. And you were like, I don't know, just got this drink. And I was like, what See, the fuck? at this point in the evening, I stopped remembering. Yeah, I was things, gonna So say, I'm going to need you to fill in. I know that they, yeah, the people that you knew got you a drink, but a stranger also handed you a drink. Nice. So then you karaoke'd Fetty Wap. I, I do remember Ketty, I do remember Fetty Wap because I remember it was the bullshit version that had that extra verse on the end that I didn't know. Monty? No, not Monty. <laughs> I did because I wanted you to do the song with me, but you were like, I don't want to fucking do Monty's verse because nobody likes Monty. So I was like, fine, I'll just <laughs> Sorry, go up Monty. and do the whole song. Monty, if you're listening, we love you. He probably um, is. If, <laughs> he's got nothing better to do. <clears throat> but so we, um, I was like, fine. Because the first time we had gone to the room, I was like, I really wanted to do karaoke, but I wasn't drunk enough to do it. Mm-hmm. So, this time I was absolutely drunk enough because oh, yeah. I had people handing me Long Islands and tequila sunrises and other things. Strange other Fun fact, that girl that I was with, she said she got really freaked out because of how drunk I was. And she was like, because my girl's like 5'1", five, 5'2". Five, and so she was like, there's this 60-foot man who is drunk off his ass just stomping around in front of me. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you. I was uncomfortable. So I told my friends to make up a lie so we could go home. Oh, yeah. I thought they left quickly. And yeah. you had to work the next day. And they were like, see you at work. And I was like, I don't think you will. Oh, and I did, though. Yeah. And that'll be the end of this story. Because what <laughs> happened What happened then was I remember singing Federal. And you were getting pretty turned. You were very supportive. Oh, yeah. And I, I appreciate was, that. I did a lot. I'll, I'll take over. I was giving you cigarettes and your girlfriend at the time fucking flipped the fuck out. You oh, yeah. No, that? she flipped the fuck out about everything for what it's Yeah. Started. And then at some point, I had to... What did... You're... Okay, so your jacket was in my car. My car was parked yes. by the city market. Because which relatively it was warm close. when we got there, but I brought a jacket because it was getting cold right. because it was the end of the summer. So I was like... I was supportive of you, but I was like, there's no fucking way I'm taking him home because he's crazy. No, and I, your and girlfriend I, and at the time was there. So I'm like, you got him, right? And she's like, yeah. So I'm like, cool. I can kick back. And, and I will be the drinking. first to admit that I got way too crazy yeah. that night. Like I went way And too then far. you were like, my jacket. And I was like, I'll get you your jacket some other time. And you were like, my keys are in my jacket. And I was like, all right. So I walk and get your keys. Walk all the way over to my car by myself. Come back. Which at this point, I don't remember because yeah. at this point well, in the evening, I'll interject and say that I was um, out front yeah, of the that's room. That's where I, and I come and back. And this in. is where you came back in. What what would ha- what happened at this point is, unbe- this is what I don't remember. After I sang karaoke, I finished my very strong drink that I had and was let out. And I went outside because it was really hot. Yeah. And there was a woman outside selling candy. Yep. And she tried shout to... Shout out Candy Lady. I love Shout you. out Candy Lady. If you are somehow listening to this, we love you. And I yes. am very sorry about what happened next. Because <laughs> she tried to give me a Snickers bar. Because she was like, you ass is too drunk. You need yep. to eat yep. something. Yep. And I was like, I don't have any money. Get away from me. I can't pay for that. And she's like, she's like, no, baby. It's free. Just eat it. And Which, for the record, it's not free. It was not free. <laughs> because she would have absolutely made me pay for it. Yeah. Um, also at this point in the night... Uh, my ex's one of my ex's friends had gotten very drunk and tried to fuck a cop oh i know and uh, yeah you remember oh i know uh she had actually kissed me and fed me a marinara stick from uncle nick's which was an interesting turn of events to happen Mm -hmm. as well yeah she yeah she's a very interesting she's a uh, she uh she actually comes into my work sometimes and gives me a dirty look like i'm the one fucking up like I, I picture she goes back to my ex-girlfriend she's like do you know i just saw him working at his job like a fucking <laughs> asshole like what kind of fuck what kind of piece of shit does he think he is he thinks he can just go to his job and make money and after like, all like, of that after everything but yeah this is where i'll jump back in so i go and get my car because i'm like might as well drive it over to the bar we're at and then i can give him back his jacket so i pull up right by where you're you're sitting on the curb so I walk up to you, and you look fucked up beyond belief. And yeah, at this yeah. point, I was sitting on the curb because I had tripped over. Was it a was it a motorcycle or a bicycle? I had tripped over. It's probably a bicycle. I had it tripped over somebody's bike and like knocked it on the ground and like tried to put it back up. I would hope it was a bicycle. I hope to God it was a bicycle. <laughs> Either way, who cares at this point? Yeah. But I pull up, and you're sitting there. So I hop out, and I'm like, "What's up?" And Candy Lady was there, and another friend of mine was there, and he's like, "He's fucking done." So 
our buddy who was with us had gotten a drink from Uncle Nick's, and he's like, here's some ice. We kept trying to give you ice, because you're like, my mouth is dry. I would say, at this point in the story, I'm going to need you to tell everything, because I, the, yeah. I, the only things I remember after this was being s- led to the car. Yeah, which we'll get to. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> we're trying to give you ice, and the candy lady was, like, taking ice in her hand and, like, rubbing it on your forehead and the back of your really? neck. Yeah, she's very kind. That I did not know. And you're sitting there, and I'm like, you should just puke. Like, at this, because you're like, I like, think I'm going to puke. And I'm like, just, just do it. We've and all, I did. I puked on the curb I, of the I know. Room. We're, I remember we're getting this now. There. I remember We're getting there. So You're uncovering memories. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, we've all puked out here. Just go for it. And you're sitting on the curb, and you're like, perfect position to puke. I'm like, just let it out. We got you. So you go to puke, and you're, you're currently wearing an elephant necklace, which you were wearing at the time. And, like, you're you're bending over to puke, and I see the trajectory, and I'm like, he's going to puke on the necklace. So I tell your, your girlfriend at the time, I'm like, grab it. So she grabs it mad hard and, like, chokes you out with it, and I'm like, not that hard. No, that was intentional, so probably. So she's holding it back. We're holding you, and then you just you let it loose, and you're just fucking puking all over the street. It's glorious. I, I think it's funny when people puke. So we're standing there, and then finally we get you good and get you up, and I'm like, all right, your, your girlfriend at the time lived, like, surprisingly close well she was like what she told me some different shit she was like i'm parked on fucking madison and she was like, like 13 blocks away yeah which she was like yeah she's like i'm up away. two blocks i don't know exactly where i am but i'm parked on madison so i'm like yeah for sure i'll just walk you up there i already know you guys had to i because this is so one of the things i remember fucking far. Is her where on this had, side you on this side where and, i had fucking parked my car and i had to go get it yeah i had to walk like double that and yeah. i'm like bitch where the fuck are you parked at yeah. so we walk all the way down there and you were just so drunk and just rambling and i was like i need to get the fuck out of here and i kept being like you you know where you're at and she wasn't even parked she was going to, she was like parked in the parking lot she, for an she didn't apartment even know where she was going for an apartment that she was going to and i'm like you said you were parked on the street not fucking where you're living or yeah. your friend lives I'm like, you didn't tell me you were going to fucking walk. She was on Madison, but way the fuck down there. So I'm mm. like, all right, cool. And we drop you off. And I go back to the bar. And I lost our friend we're with. And I'm just like, I don't even know what's going on anymore. And I don't remember how it ended for me, but it ended nicely for you. It did not end nicely for me because what had, I'd act- say it ended nice. what had actually happened, for those of us still tuning into the story, <laughs> is that uh, Nick had let it slip to my girlfriend at the time that I had taken the last time that we had gone out. And... um he from what she told me he goes don't tell him i told you that well i didn't think it was a big deal i never know well i hid it from her for reasons obviously yeah i never know and this happens to me all the time i'm always like if you're gonna be back on your bullshit let me know who i I just say i'm drunk and then she like got super pissed to me and then so i was like don't no that's how she was with people though like she like that's just how she was like when she got mad it's just you gotta roll with it yeah and so i hit her (laughs) Oh, <laughs> with a car. Good. <laughs> we'll bleep that. I mean, I don't wish harm on people, but if it was to be anybody, I'm glad it was that. Ooh, spicy. For what? So how was how the ride home was excruciating because I was fading in and out See, of consciousness. She said she was going into an apartment. She pointed at it and she was like, I'm going to be living there soon with my friend. You should come over sometime. No, she was full of shit because she. What the fuck? She, I was so She confused. was talking about living. And it was the friend she had brought with her. Yeah. The, it, it, yeah. Who lived down. Yeah, I know what you're yeah. going to say. <laughs> I was. I don't think you knew what I was. Oh, I, I heard the. I heard the sound, so I knew what was coming next. Uh, <laughs> we'll just edit it out. And say it. Yeah. What did you think I was gonna? Say? I thought you were gonna say. Oh or no! Say I was gonna say. We'll oh. edit all of those out, so people are just like, <laughs> like what did they knows? say? Um, A lot of editing in this episode. I love it though. It's gonna be good. Um, the ride home was god awful because I was slipping in and out of consciousness, and she was <laughs> screaming at me the whole entire ride home, like screaming. And I, hand of God, couldn't even tell you what she was screaming about anymore. But yeah. she was like, "You didn't tell me this, and you did this, and you did that." And like, I specifically remember, I was like, "I wish she would just crash the fucking car <laughs> and, and kill us both, so that I could end my misery and get out of this bullshit." And that was the last time I ever got drunk because at that point I was like, "Okay." Let's pump the brakes a little bit because what it what see, it, I think you could have found a balance. See, I tried to find a balance, and what happened? Do you want to know what happened when I found a balance? We might have to put it in the next one. We'll okay. get back to your balance. We'll get back to the balance, but because that is a whole. How other was the story next day at work? That's my question. The next day at when work. When did you work? Seven. I worked at seven in the morning, and I came into Perfect. work visibly drunk. I've done that. Um, I slept for four hours, and my boss at the time, who is still there, and God bless her heart. If you're listening to this, you know exactly who you are. <laughs> 
God bless your heart. For she pulled me aside and she goes, "Oh God, hon, what is going on?" <laughs> and I was just like, "It was kind of a rough night." And she was like, "Okay, just take a cart, push it around, keep your head low, Get back to life. sweat it out." Yeah. And like I, I hand of God was, I started that shift at eight. I was still drunk until about eleven in the morning. Yeah, I, I did that one time. And then I, have at you the old ever, place we were. And then have you had a, a waking hangover where you go from drunk to hungover like instantly? Yeah, I don't get hangovers, but if I do that shit, I did it one time. I was out until three in the morning, mm-hmm. went to bed at four, woke up at like six, got to work at seven, felt fucking great, chipper, ready to talk to everyone. No one's in a retail store at seven in the morning. Right. Got to 11. I got thirstier than I've ever been in my Your entire, entire life. life. I went to the gas station. I remember this. I you got like two, big two giant bottles thing. of water, a Gatorade. Like an orange juice and one of the big gulps of Mountain Dew. It was like forty five dollars of drink, and I just sat in my car on my hour long lunch break, and drinking, just drinking and them. Drinking. And then someone uh, who came in to like relieve me from my shift at five was like, "What's up?" And I was like, "I'm hungover, I think." And they were like, "It's five o'clock." It was Nancy. And I remember I, yeah, you told it me was, it was. Shout out Nancy. <laughs> bleep, <laughs> bleep it fucking, out. We'll bleep it out. We won't bleep that one. Shout no. out Nancy. Shout out Nancy. We Nancy, love you. thanks for being an OG every yeah, time. Yeah, we you were, were there. the work mom. You were definitely the work, the stern work mom. Yeah. she wasn't the fun work mom. She was the stern. Work mom. <laughs> so that that'll be part one of the drinking stories. That was part one. We can one. definitely get into. No, this this is going to be a multi part series. So if you stuck with us for this long, thanks. Yeah. For, thanks. The for next one it won't out. be this topic. We'll we'll come up with something. No, this is going to be one we'll do future episodes yeah, it'll, for it'll come back around because i had i thought of i think 10 both collect- during this i know i thought of and, more stories during this yeah. than i wanted to tell so we'll 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 come back with some drinking stories and i'll keep making them and you know slim slim might might come around one day but uh, uh i'll keep making them I, I, i'm definitely out here making my own stories to tell <laughs> beautiful stories so tune in this has been the dapper dads podcast this has been the dapper dads keep it dapper yeah we don't have kids we don't have kids tune in to episode three we need you Holler at us for that Cars 2. Yes, keep in mind, stupid one, bitch. one of you lucky fucks has just won a free <laughs> copy of Cars 2. So let us know. <laughs>